Oh, hello my friends, hope you are well. Today I thought I'd whip up a little micro diorama for you all, trying to see what kind of action I can squish into a much smaller size than I'd normally use for one of my builds. And at the time of release, it should be very close to Christmas, so this is basically a Christmas themed diorama because this orc is wearing a red hat like Santa, although his red hat is made from his brains explosively vacating his skull, so yeah, Merry Christmas I suppose. I dug this base out of an assortment of Warhammer bits recently and I wasn't sure what it belonged to but I thought it'd be a really cool little plinth to try and build a tiny scene on top of. I'd also had an idea in my head of a Cadian soldier kneeling down and firing a shot which blows off the head of an orc, you know, just the typical psychologically well adjusted thoughts that we all have. Um, so you know, quick maths, tiny diorama build plus orc head explosion equals a good time and that is what we're doing today. To start with, I needed to build a Caden in this kneeling firing pose, but I didn't have the right parts left over so I had to use a bit of green stuff to make that dream a reality. I first used some to attach his right arm in a way that he could be aiming upward and looking down the sights of his barrel at the same time, then made some surgical adjustments to his left arm to match up with the hand that comes pre-installed on the barrel. I then use a tiny little sliver more of green stuff to construct a little cuff around this connection point to match the other arm. And I know we've only just started, but this tiny bit of cuff work was probably my favourite building step of the whole diorama. It was just so satisfying and really goes to show that it's not the size of your cuff that matters, it's how you stick your hand through it. What? His head needed a little slimming down to help it fit in the space between the las gun and the little neck ruffles on his uniform and once this had been shoved into place I decided to add a bit more green stuff into the space between his torso and right shoulder I'd created earlier as this area looked a bit too spaced out and was making his body look a bit lopsided so I used the green stuff to kind of extend his body armour a bit and make everything look a bit more proportional and this step was also very satisfying as green stuff is just really nice and easy to work with. Finally I sculpted a quite basic muzzle flash shape on the end of his gun which I was hoping would add to the dynamic look of Arcadian when it came to setting him down on the scene and he was all finished. That didn't take a great deal of work but I was feeling really proud of him actually because I was able to take parts that weren't quite compatible beforehand and use some green stuff to get the exact pose I needed for this scene. So yeah this is probably exactly how it feels to be a proud parent. Not that my parents would know. <laughs> uh... Next up was our little orky porky boy and this was a lot simpler because I didn't need to make any special adjustments to the body or the pose, I just wanted to blow the top of his head off basically, which I did using a Dremel. I ended up taking a bit too much material off with the Dremel, I'd planned to leave the majority of his face intact, but that's just the way she goes, you know, sometimes she goes, sometimes she doesn't. She didn't go. Where she goes. I'd been planning to use green stuff to create the gooey brain splatter exit in his skull, but these weird little plastic nodules that emerge from the Dremelin accidentally look like way better gore than I could make intentionally with the green stuff, so I decided to make more of this stuff instead, using my Dremel on some of the leftover sprue to create some melty little lumps of flesh which I could cut off and put behind my ear for safekeeping. Before I added the gore, I wanted to add the projectile which would cause the cranial explosion, so I snipped off a little bullet here drilled the bottom out and glued it onto an off cut of wire. And this bullet is slightly too big for the las gun, but the smaller ones wasn't given the desired effect so we're suspending disbelief a little bit here, or maybe the Cadians have developed some kind of expanding bullet technology, maybe I could use that for my I glued our little travelling bullet friend into place in the skull and then got to work attaching those lumps of chunky gore from a moment ago all around the top of his head and I thought this was cool because it already looked like an over the top gore explosion like something out of Kill Bill maybe and it felt like it would be right at home within the 40k universe. To finish this bad boy off I used a bit more green stuff to cover up the big gouge I'd made with the Dremel earlier, just kind of sculpting a rough mouth and nose shape back into place and I'm pretty happy with how he looks actually. This should hopefully match up with the muzzle flash of Arcadian quite well later on and it's now time to paint these babies up. I wanted to go with quite a traditional colour scheme for the Caden, as I've been painting a bunch of purple and grey ones in my Swamperial Guard videos recently, and I've painted some bright orange ones I did in the diorama around Halloween time. So it's been quite a while since I've painted them in their typical colour scheme, and it felt good to get back to basics with them. I've been trying out a bit of a hybrid highlighting process for me with these guys' armour especially, by building up layers of different shades of green to get some volumetric highlights, and then edge highlighting on top of that also. And it would pretty much go like this, get an area looking good, 
ruin it by going over the top with the next green colour, then getting annoyed and having to touch it up all over again. And to be honest, it was quite a subtle effect I was going for. I think my camera wasn't really picking the full effect up, so it probably wasn't even worth the time investment, but either way. I finished them off with some finer edge highlights, which helped to frame everything in and made me feel a bit better about myself. I've been trying to move away from using washes so much recently, so I didn't use any for this guy, as I think relying on them too much can kind of stifle your painting skills. So I've just been trying to focus on building up highlights and shadows by starting with that darker base coat and progressing up through the lighter layers. Although, to be fair, I have been using contrast paints as base coats quite a lot recently, and these basically have a wash-like effect built into them, so I guess that's basically kind of still cheating still, you know? I'm pretty much an addict, replacing one vice with another. But yeah, for some components at least, so I've just been raw dogging those lighter tones on top of darker ones to get your highlights, and I realise I'm now just rambling pretty much, so I'll finish them off by painting the muzzle flash in with some oranges and yellow, and a little bit of pale grey on top of those to bring the previous colours together and tone everything down a bit. And boom, here he is. I actually really like how this little guy has come out. This is probably the closest approximation to the box art I'd have been able to get. And I do love the classic Cadian look, so I'm liking how he's come out. Now, moving on to our greenest of boys. So the orc was getting pretty much the same treatment, you know, all the usual stuff, no fancy techniques here, just whacking on all the base coats, then coming back with one or two layers of highlights to try and breathe a bit more life into the individual components and help them stand out a bit. The chainsaw got a bit of extra pizzazz with a yellow and black hazard stripe design on the metal housing, as well as some extra rusty stippling thrown in to give more of a well-used appearance. And the remaining red details got some extra love to help accentuate them, and I know some people will say red and green should never be seen but to those people i say piss off the aforementioned green skin got the same treatment I've been given to my Gretchen and Snotlin in my Swampiral Guard videos as I love the bright and vibrant look it gives and it's just really fun to paint to be honest. So I'm painting some bright moot green over the Carandrus green contrast paint I used as the base coat, then mixing in some moon dust which is a pale yellow that works well with the brighter green to add our final highlights. All that was left now was the lovely cranial explosion that I'd been looking forward to and I'd save till the end as I always like to save my favourite bits all last so like if i'm eating a meal i'll eat my least favorite bits first and then i'll be left with two little lonely sausages i can guzzle down in isolated glory and back to the brain splat i'd use some glistening blood effect paint to get quite a wet shiny blood layer on the first then some more moot green to simulate some fleshy scraps caught up in the mix some ivory color for some skull fragments and a bit of pink for the brain matter flying around the bullet got a quick touch up so it wasn't so lost in all the gore some more glistening blood was flicked around to add to the realism of that explosive brain extraction and finally I painted in the chunks of the helmet I'd missed a moment ago. Looking pretty good I'd say, a bit bolder and brighter than the Cadian but definitely looking nice and spicy. So all I needed to do now was whip together a little background scene for them on top of that base from earlier. For our base, I just wanted to build a little snippet of a battlefield with one section elevated to add variance in the overall visual finish and also to allow my Cadian to fire up at the orc with an angle matching the trajectory of the bullet sticking out of its head. So after gluing down a random plastic art call that could look like some kind of cool military blockade thing, I started to layer up some scraps of cork sheet on one side with a few pipes mingled in here and there to construct that elevated position we needed. And once that was in, I basically just went to work adding in any little random greebles and details I could find in my bits box or cut from styrene rods and plastic card or guitar strings and whatever else I could rustle up you know. Just using whatever felt right in a given position to add some visual interest and get this looking a bit more like it was part of a trench system or some kind of urban ruins from the 40k universe. This process didn't take too long actually so after I'd reached a point where I was mostly satisfied with how she was looking I sloshed on a bit of my homemade mud mixture for added texture and all the muddy areas as usual and before that could dry I squished in a few more belts of bullets and random scattered to add to the battlefield vibe. I left that all to dry and then got it primed up and ready for painting. I didn't want the base to clash with any of the paint and work I'd done on our miniatures already. I just wanted to kind of provide a backdrop that could frame them in and help them pop. So darker and more muted colours were definitely the preferred choice here. 
There are a bunch of little pipes and details that are painted in first using some metallic paint and then I turn my attention to the other remaining details which I just hit with some basic neutral colours. I wash the entire thing with a splash of strong tone by Army Painter as I always find that adding a wash to a scene like this really helps to bring the different items together and add a bit of commonality between them. Maybe we could solve world peace by bringing all the leaders together into one room and sloshing some acrylic washes over them or maybe not. But either way, my next step was to dry brush the muddy areas with a couple of different browns to bring out the definition. After that, I went about adding a quite crude chipping effect to our indiscriminate military blockade thing, using some paler greens and a couple of rusty brown colours, then gave a quick touch up to these sandbags to get rid of the really glossy sheen they had going on. For all the metal pieces that were looking way too shiny, I decided to give them a bit of dirty down rust treatment, as it had been about 2 or 3 videos since I'd used this stuff now and I was starting to feel like I was having withdrawal symptoms from it. Then its best friend, dirty down moss came out to add a bit of mossy green variation onto some of the muddy areas on the ground and raised sections to the side and the final step in this paint job was to use some Nolan oil to add some indiscriminate oily ground liquids here and there. And I was really pleased with how this base was looking actually. It should serve as a fitting backdrop for our two miniatures so all that was left to do was give it a quick rim job behind the bushes and attach our two combatants. <laughs> So my friends, looking pretty good overall I'd say. I think I've managed to build a cool little scene using the tiny space we had available and I'm not sure what shape you would call this base, comment down below if you know and you will win my only pair of socks without holes in but I think I'm going to get some more of these. As I had so much fun making this that I could see it becoming a semi regular thing to try and get a cool and unique looking diorama on something of this size. There are a couple of things I'd improve if I did it again, with one thing being the bullet, you know, I'd like to have this poking out a little bit further from the gauze, it kind of blends in there at the moment, or you have to look at it from certain viewpoints or distances to get the full effect, which isn't ideal, so I'd definitely look to finesse that more the next time I build a head exploding with a happy little bullet peeking out. One thing I was really pumped about though was the Dremel sprue gore technique I stumbled across in this video. I'm not sure if this is already a thing that other people have done before, but it was a new discovery for me and you can bet your sweet ass I'll be doing this anytime I need to make some more gore for my miniatures. Anyway, leave a comment down below if you have any ideas for tiny scenes and dioramas you'd like to see on bases of this size because I had loads of fun making this and also because I'm rapidly running out of space for my regular size diorama storage. Make sure to subscribe or leave a like or whatever else if you enjoy this video and check out my channel as I have some other videos you might like with not all of them being as weird as this one. But for now... I have been your friendly neighborhood swamp rats, and I will see you very soon in another video. See ya.